I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about marijuana and female reproductive health. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families for over 15 years and answering questions about lifestyle changes, specifically marijuana for a long time. Marijuana is one of the most common recreationally used drugs in the United States. One in five Americans have tried marijuana at least once in their life. And lots of people use it on a very regular basis. It is legal recreationally in over 18 states, and in even more states have legalized it for medical use. And there is a real assumption that marijuana is safe and it's good for your health. If it's something that can be prescribed by a doctor to treat medical issues like nausea for chemotherapy patients, sleep disorders, anxiety, then it must be safe. If you can write a prescription for it, then it must be okay. If it's okay by doctors in certain circumstances, then it must be okay in all circumstances. And we'll find when it comes to your reproductive health, this is just not the case. This video is specifically for a focus on female reproductive health and marijuana. I have another video that focuses on men's reproductive health and marijuana, but there's so much information. I really wanted to put it in two different videos. And if you are someone that is regularly using marijuana and you are struggling to build your family or suffering from miscarriages, I really want you to listen to this video. It might be very disappointing to understand that the evidence shows that marijuana is not good for your reproductive health or in pregnancy, but it's important to get the facts and not just assume that something is natural and safe and okay to use in your particular situation. Marijuana has been studied in lots of aspects of female reproductive health. When my patients are reporting to me irregular menstrual cycles or irregular ovulation, I ask them about marijuana use. Marijuana, regular marijuana use has been shown to impact the production of LH from the pituitary gland. LH or luteinizing hormone is the hormone that signals the release of the egg in the middle of your menstrual cycle. And THC, the uh, one of the components of marijuana has been shown to decrease the production of LH by at least 30% in people that are smoking or consuming marijuana on a pretty regular basis. So low levels of LH can throw off ovulation if you aren't ovulating, it's much more difficult to get pregnant. If you're ovulating on an irregular basis, it can take longer to get pregnant because it's hard to time intercourse. And even if you are ovulating, lower levels of LH have been shown to impact the function of the luteal phase. Luteal phase is the implantation phase. It's the second half of the menstrual cycle between ovulation and your next period where an embryo should be implanting. And so this effect on LH, an effect on regular cycles and ovulation can throw off someone's menstrual cycles and it can take longer to conceive. So studies have shown this, that regular marijuana use increases the time it takes to get pregnant. An excellent study published in 2021 in Human Reproduction, a well-respected journal, looked at over 1,200 couples that were planning to conceive and found that in the female partner with regular marijuana use had a 50% lower chance of getting pregnant over a six month period. It took them longer to conceive if they were regularly using marijuana. And so my patients will often say like, okay, I get that. But maybe if we do fertility treatment, it will overcome any sort of poor impact of marijuana. And so studies have looked at this too. And marijuana use has been shown to decrease success rates with IVF. Two different studies have looked at success rates with IVF in patients who are using marijuana on a regular basis. In the first study, over 221 IVF cycles were followed and patients were asked about their marijuana use. And if the female partner was using marijuana on a pretty regular basis within months of the egg retrieval, there were fewer eggs retrieved, fewer embryos, and a lower success rate with their IVF cycle. In a different study looking at marijuana use in over 730 IVF cycles and 421 women, of the 317 women that had a positive pregnancy test after 
their embryo transfer if they were regularly using marijuana within a few months of that positive pregnancy test, they had a two-fold higher risk of miscarriage. There can be an assumption that marijuana is safe in pregnancy. Um, some people use it as a way to treat nausea in early pregnancy, but it can be associated with increased risk of miscarriage. It's also been associated with lower birth weight in the babies and then even withdrawal symptoms after the babies are born. An excellent review article looking at cannabis use during pregnancy and even in the postpartum period showed that on a cellular level, cannabinoids really disrupt DNA replication, cellular motility, like we've seen in sperm, cellular migration, and even replication. There are concerns about the impact on the function and development of embryos and even interference with vascular growth as the embryo is trying to implant into the uterine lining. So I know this is a lot of negative information for something that a lot of people feel is natural and most likely safe. But if you are planning to start your family, you are, especially if you're struggling with infertility and you or your partner are regularly using marijuana, this is something that you could change and it could improve your reproductive health. A lot of my patients are disappointed when they hear the evidence regarding marijuana and reproductive health. This impacts not only female partners, but male partners as well and it can decrease success with fertility treatment. It can increase chances of miscarriage. And it's so frustrating to hear that if you assume that marijuana is safe and natural, which a lot of people still make that assumption. We are so comfortable now counseling about the harmful impacts of tobacco and cigarettes on our overall health and especially our reproductive health. But that was not the case in the 1950s. And I think as we get more and more evidence, we're gonna realize that marijuana is really impacting our reproductive health. So this is something that you could change and think about and learn about. And I hope this video was helpful. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have and subscribe to this channel. Stick around for more learning.